So yesterday I asked you guys which Warframe mechanic slash system do you understand the least? And the mechanic that won by a landslide was damage attenuation. And I was not surprised in the slightest. But why? Well, it's really confusing, it's not really well explained anywhere, and it's sort of also become this blanket term that people tend to throw over all sorts of damage reductions that the enemies might have. But that's not quite true. Enemies can have damage reduction without having damage attenuation. Perfect example of this is a Guardian Eximus. Guardian Eximus have a 90% damage reduction to all damage taken, but they don't have damage attenuation. Now, actual damage attenuation is relatively straightforward. It is a special type of damage reduction that some higher-end enemies like Archons have that reduces your damage done to them based on the power of your weapon. So the stronger your weapon is, or the stronger the game considers your weapon to be, the more it will reduce your damage done to them. This might sound strange, but it kind of makes sense. It makes really powerful weapons less powerful while not affecting weaker weapons as much. But in most scenarios, stronger weapons, even though they're affected more than weaker weapons, are still a better option, even though the weaker weapons aren't affected as much. Now, there's a reason why I said how strong the game considers your weapon to be. Because the calculation the game does to determine the power of your weapon is a bit odd. It's total damage times crit times fire rate or attack speed, times multi-shot, times body part multipliers. So it completely ignores things like magazine size or reload speed. Though for a lot of enemies with damage attenuation, the crit is actually not present in this calculation, so you can bypass their damage attenuation with crits. This just makes the whole thing really confusing. Now there are two things that always bypass damage attenuation. The first one is faction damage, so Rhino is by far the best Warframe to run against these enemies because Roar provides universal faction damage. And the second one is an evolution on the first three Incarnum guns that gives them a 50% chance to do 2000% extra damage on a non-critical hit. That's why these weapons always were and always will be really popular for Archon hunts. So damage attenuation itself is not that difficult to understand. It's basically just like the stronger your weapon is, the more resistant the enemy is gonna be to it. That's straightforward. The complicated and confusing part are the rules, because as I mentioned already, some enemies do calculate your crits, some enemies don't. Some enemies have additional damage reductions, some enemies don't. And trust me, it's really not worth knowing every single aspect of all of this, because it's just too much stuff. Let's take an Acolyte as an example. They have a 62.5% damage reduction on their health, and 50% bonus damage to their shields. Then they have damage attenuation, which caps your DPS at 14,600, but this can be bypassed by crits. However, crit damage against Acolytes is modified. You crit them differently to other enemies. So the calculation for Acolytes is this. That is not worth knowing. What is worth knowing is that if you're fighting an Acolyte, you want to use a crit weapon, because it can bypass the DPS cap. And if you really want to destroy them, you want to run Rhino or at least subsume Rhino's roar onto your frame. This way you're gonna have two things that get around the attenuation and absolutely blow them up. This is actually the case for most enemies that have damage attenuation. Rhino's roar in combination with either a good crit weapon, if they are vulnerable to crit, or one of the original Incarnons that evolved towards that 2000% damage bonus, will absolutely shred them. So if you don't want to think about it too much, the safest way to deal with damage attenuation is to run Rhino or a frame with Rhino's roar and one of the original Incarnons. Then if the enemy has armor, it's always worthwhile to try and strip it away because in most cases the damage reduction from armor stacks multiplicatively with the damage reduction from damage attenuation and you also want to make sure that you are using the correct damage type for the enemy you're fighting. Archons for example use alloy armor which takes increased damage from radiation so you want to use radiation. This is because the enemy's weaknesses aren't factored into damage attenuation. Now if you're not gonna use one of the original incarnons and you want to use a different weapon you want to bear a few things in mind. Number one, inaccurate weapons that tend to miss, which is the case for a lot of shotguns where the pellets spread out, are hit far worse with damage attenuation than everything else. This is because the burst DPS of your weapon is calculated as if everything hits. Number two, you do not want to use weapons with terrible damage uptime because damage attenuation doesn't care about your magazine size or reload speed. So if the weapon has amazing burst DPS, but it has a tiny magazine and it takes forever to reload on top of that, it's gonna get absolutely shafted because all the game sees is the amazing DPS 
not the downtime. And number three, you want to be careful when it comes to fire rate, and this kind of ties into number one, because the more fire rate you get, the easier it is to miss shots. So it's not very practical to mod for high fire rate. Number four, you want to prioritize crit weapons over everything else, because while some enemies do include crit in the damage attenuation calculation, most of them don't. And number five, you don't want to lean too heavily into status, because a lot of enemies that have damage attenuation are also status resistant. This isn't too bad if you're using some Something like a melee weapon with a heavy slash setup because that doesn't proc too many slash procs but if you're using a weapon that procs a lot of electricity to do damage it's not gonna do an awful lot. The basic idea here is that you want to invest as little as possible into things that are affected by damage attenuation and invest into things that are not affected by it without breaking your belt. Now to top it all off I want to go over Archons in a little bit more detail as they are somewhat special and they're probably the reason why you're watching this video. Archons have by far the harshest damage attenuation. Now Archon's damage attenuation comes in three layers. They have 20% damage reduction at all times, they calculate your weapon's DPS and then reduce it by the appropriate amount, including crits, and if you do more than 120th of their maximum life in a span of 0.6 seconds, it triggers a third layer that limits your DPS to 1/12th of their maximum life. This layer slowly decays back to normal over time unless you hit them for 1/20th of their life again. This is why normal weapons can chunk the Archon pretty heavily at the start, but then their damage falls off very quickly. Now people have tried to bypass this in many different ways, including changing the game settings in the options menu, but honestly the easiest and simplest way to deal with these is to just use one of the original Incarnon weapons, optionally with Rhino's Roar. You're still not gonna one-shot them, but for most people I feel the damage is gonna be more than good enough. And that's pretty much all I have when it comes to damage attenuation, so I thank you very much for watching, as always guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful, and if there is anything else you would like to add to this, feel free to leave a comment down below. Then I would also like to extend a special thank you to all the channel members, thank you very much guys, I really appreciate your support and if you would like to become a channel member as well by the way, you can check out the memberships and stuff down below. And I'll see you next time, bye bye.